Hi, Gwen. My name is Ellen, and I'll be correcting these essays for you. The first one we've got here is your task two on um, staying in the same job or switching jobs. So let's see what you wrote. In our modern era, the idea of whether employees should remain in one job for their whole career or explore different roles has been a subject which has been debated for a long time. While some argue for the benefits of longevity and dedication to one job, others advocate uh, I would have gotten rid of the four here. Others advocate the value of varied experience. In this context, the decision might not be one of either or, but a balance between the two in order to allow growth and stability in different measures. Okay, interesting. Um, the language is great, and I really liked that last sentence. I thought the vocabulary and the language, all of it was just so natural. My one concern is um, the way the question is phrased. That's why it's really helpful if you can include it in your essay. I don't remember the exact wording, but I have to tell you that the exact wording is really important. So if it tells you uh, to what extent do you agree or disagree, if it tells you uh, which do you agree with, the way you approach the essay is going to be different. So this is rather important. You see, the way you answer that question uh, is going to have an effect on your task achievement, okay? Or it, or it very, mal, very well may have an effect on your task achievement. Because in band seven under task achievement, the band descriptors say, um, uh, presents a clear position throughout the response, okay? That's why it's important to um, have a clear position, which responds to the question or the uh, command in that prompt. Okay, so that's um, some. That's why I really would have liked to have the question here, and then I could have told you if this was appropriate or not. All right. Meanwhile, let's keep going with the rest of the essay. Remaining a single job for a lifetime has its merits. Good. That's a great, clear sentence. I know exactly what you're going to talk about in this paragraph. You're going to talk about the positives of staying in one job. So, really nice job with that topic sentence. Loyalty and commitment to a company can forge a deep understanding of its operation, leading to expertise and potentially leadership roles. Moreover, long term, employees often develop a strong sense of connection to their company. Connection can create a strong work ethic, enhance productivity, and main helping and help. Because look, connection can create this, this, and help maintain would have been right a civil work environment. An example of this is financial controllers who oversee uh, a company's financial reporting and compliance. Let's see. Here you got some grammar problems. Um, let's see. An example of this is financial controllers who oversee a company's financial reporting and compliance benefit. Okay. Um, yeah, that's a little awkward because an example of this is financial controllers benefit immensely. It doesn't work. So um, how can we fix this? Let me think for a second. An example of this, you know what? This is what I would have done, actually. I would have just started a new sentence. There's no reason to have an extra long sentence. So let's try it again. An example of this is financial controllers who oversee a company's financial reporting and compliance, period. These professionals benefit immensely from a long-term understanding of a company's financial history and practices. This knowledge allows them to make informed decisions, which helps them and the company. All right, great. Great example. You really extended it. You um, supported. So I'm really rather happy with that. You just had those two instances of some grammatical errors um, in the essay. But other than that, so far, I'm really happy with this paragraph. All right, let's continue. On the other hand, exploring different jobs throughout a career offers its own advantages. It allows individuals to diversify their skill sets, adapt to different work cultures, and gain a broader perspective on their field. This breadth of experience can be invaluable, especially in a rapidly evolving job market that increasingly values adapt adaptability and a range of skills. Good. For instance, for someone who changed 
from marketing role in one industry to a project management role in another. Uh, you, you know what? You don't need the four here. So you said, for instance, someone who changed from a marketing role in one industry to a project management role in another can acquire a more diverse skill set, making them more professional. Okay. Job hopping can also lead to greater financial gain and career advancement as changing roles often come in salary increments and new opportunities for growth. Okay, great. I like that. Um, again, just a couple of little grammatical things there. Now, this is interesting. We don't really recommend a five paragraph structure. Instead, we suggest that students use a four paragraph structure where the second body paragraph will typically um, clearly de demonstrate their, their opinion. And the reason that works is because you've already answered the, 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 you've already answered the question. You've also given your opinion in the introduction, as I mentioned earlier. So there's really no reason for this. It's oftentimes it's very repetitive because you've already said, um, some of the arguments. And, um, like I said, if you've done a well-written introduction, you don't need to do this. So let's continue. As both sides of the argument have their own note. I don't like that word, their own note. That's odd. Uh, it is evident that the finest approach lies in striking a balance between a lifelong commitment and career mobility. Employees should not feel pressured to stay in one job for their entire career if they believe that switching jobs would better serve the professional, their personal and professional development. Those who find fulfillment and growth within a single organization should be encouraged to commit long term. Okay, yeah, I'm not really crazy about this. The, again, language is lovely. But I don't really think that you should have dedicated an entire paragraph to this. Um, you could have essentially said this in different ways in your introduction and in your conclusion. Okay, and I think you did in your introduction. So I would not have um, not I would not have made its own this an, its own separate paragraph. Okay. Um, let's see. In conclusion, there is no perfect answer to the question of whether employees should stay in the same job for life or switch jobs during their careers. The right approach depends on individual circumstances and goals. It is essential to recognize that the workforce is different and there is no room for both lifelong commitment and career mobility. Okay. Neither wholly disagreeing nor agreeing is the most balanced approach as it allows for a flexible and personalized career path. Okay, again, it's fine to do that. Um, yeah, it's, it's fine to do that. And honestly, the examiners, as long as you really express your viewpoint clearly in your position, they would be okay with this no matter how the question is phrased. So I'm not going to be a stickler on things like that because this is really very well written. Um, like I said, there were just a couple of grammatical issues, but still, even at those very high top band scores, you are allowed um, some gram grammatical mistakes. And yours were uh, really very minor in the grand scheme of things. So I thought this was excellently written. Um, again, I'm just going to remind you that uh, you have to really pay attention to the way the prompt is written. You have to make sure that you answer very directly the question or the command in your introduction. Uh, also remember that you really shouldn't have that third body paragraph. Um, I didn't see this really doing your essay any favors. I don't think it helped it in any way. So I would have just stuck with these two very well-developed paragraphs. And then you can just do what you did here. Yeah, it was really redundant and didn't help you. So there's no reason to add it, okay? But it's a really well-written essay. You should feel very proud of it. Let's go on to your test one. Okay, so this is the English and Homestay letter now. Dear Mrs. Mr. Holmes, don't forget to put... No, wait. So first of all, there's no comma here, okay? It goes after the word Holmes. So, I hope you're doing well by the time you receive this letter. I am thrilled to have the opportunity to participate in the English and Homestay program in the UK, and more so, more so is one word, to have your family as my hosts. Okay. Um, the first thing I notice is that you're missing the first bullet here, which says that you're supposed to introduce yourself. Um, you didn't do that. And anytime you miss an entire bullet, or even if you miss half of a bullet, you're really going to lower your task achievement score. So um, again, look at the look at the uh, band descriptors uh, for task one, and 
there's some there's some insinuation about the score you could get if you miss um a bullet okay uh so it's a pretty big deal so you have to be very very careful with um how you respond to the bullets and even how well so if it has like an and so for example if it says um ask this and this you have to ask both things okay so you have to be really careful with that um here like i, I like i said i see that you've missed the introduction say some things about yourself i think is what it says introduce yourself which you haven't done so be careful with that all right as i write this letter i would love to learn more about the uk and your family's way of life could you kindly share some insights on some of these questions what are your family interests and hobbies i would love to learn about the activities you enjoy and perhaps join in when i arrive are there any cultural practices or etiquettes mm, i would have said etiquette singular that i should be aware of to ensure that i am a respectful guest in your home that's a great question i like that in terms of transportation is there anything i should know to get around your area um public transport or local travel trips would be greatly appreciated okay great i'm scheduled to reach the uk on the 31st of february at approximately 3 30 p.m i want to ensure that my arrival time aligns well great word with your family schedule so please let me know beforehand if there's any arrangement i should be aware of or if there's anything i can make uh what happened here is that a or if there's anything i can do to make this trip smoother for everyone i general i am generally i can't speak tonight i'm genuinely there we go looking forward to meeting your family learning more about your culture while improving my english skills during my stay thank you in advance for your time and assistance okay how'd you end it ah you didn't end it okay this is another thing that's really important. You absolutely have to have that sign off, okay? Um, because that completes the letter and it's just, it's really important. And there's also a right way and a wrong way to do a sign off. Since this is a formal letter, it should have been here yours sincerely, okay? You knew the name of the people you were writing to, so yours sincerely would have been appropriate. If you had not known the people, then yours faithfully would have been appropriate. So, um, it's important that you include it. Okay. Do not disregard it. Um, so you had that little weird thing here with the comma that was odd and you missed the sign off again. That's something you don't want to do as that could affect your coherence and cohesion score because it's part of paragraphing. It's part of the elements that the letter needs to have. So, um, keep that in mind. Um, for me, other than that, the biggest problem is that you left out that bullet introducing yourself. So um, let me tell you a little bit about what I would have done with this first introductory paragraph. Um, this is fine. You were kind of semi-formal. You weren't, you weren't really formal, okay? And I personally, I always think that this should be formal because you don't know these people. You've never met them before. You're writing them a letter for the first time, introducing yourself and basically thanking them for hosting you, um, as well as ask questions, of course. So I always lean a little more formal with this. Um, I'd say your, your style was kind of semi-formal slash formal because um, you had things like contractions. I hope you're doing well. So the way I would have started this is first by uh, saying the reason for my writing. And that's a typical thing that we do in formal letters. Okay, so it would have been something like, Dear Mrs. and Mr. Holmes, I'm writing to uh thank you for agreeing to be my host family for the english and homestay program and uh also ask you a few questions prior to my arrival my name is jane smith i am an engineering student and this is my first time coming to the uk okay so really something like that was is what i would have done here in this first um in this first paragraph okay so i'm really happy with your language level i mean it's obviously it's super high it's fantastic you use some absolutely precise words and uh expressions so that's all great a couple little mistakes but nothing really that i'm concerned about in any way um, i'm really more concerned about those test taking things okay so things that relate to task achievement okay those are the things that i want you to work on so I'm very excited that we're going to be working together. I'm really looking forward to seeing more of your essays and um, good luck to you. I'll be waiting to see what you write next.